You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Welcome, everyone, to another very thought provoking episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Hope that's true. I bet it is. Welcome to the show today. Thank you for listening. Again, know you have a lot of options and you're here and we appreciate that very, very much. We do appreciate it. Today we're going to be talking about the different options of uh, drone mapping uh, processing softwares because people are very focused on output deliverables and I totally get it. I totally understand it. Pix40, if you're listening to this show, please listen carefully because I think that we could make deliverables easier for people. And I think this is really the only reason that Drone Deploy is bringing on so many new users is that the deliverables are super easy to attain. The accuracy therein though, limited. So we're gonna be talking about, you know, how can you get deliverables out of other programs, especially Pix4D. And then uh, we're also gonna be talking about Drone Deploy. So we're excited about that. And by the way, I'm not anti-Drone Deploy at all. Um, everyone knows that our competitors' mapping classes teach strictly drone deploy, and we teach multiple uh, processing softwares. We teach acquisition strategy outside of using one app and showcase why there is no one app that is the answer. With terrain awareness, with orbits, with point of interest, with changing tilts and all of that, there is really no app. There is no one app that can do it all. Um, even with Pix40's uh, capture application. It's definitely one of the best, but it doesn't do everything. So we're gonna be talking about that from acquisition to processing to deliverables. This is gonna be a show that will definitely, you'll, you'll learn some things that I think you'll find valuable, so. Fantastic, here's the question. Hello, Rob and Paul. This is Joe Skytrack UAV in Omaha, Nebraska. First off, Paul, I wanted to congratulate you on your marriage. Marriage is a wonderful, beautiful thing. My question for you is, you talk a lot about PIX4D being the superior mapping program, but um, I do uh, construction management, and I found Drone Deploy to work better just as a easy, it's so easy to share maps with the client. Am I missing something? Is there, I couldn't really find this option in PIX4D when I was doing the trial. What's your opinion? Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate it. I know Paul appreciates the well wishes. I love these questions. Regarding marriage. And certainly appreciates the questions about mapping, drone deploy. I was actually talking to a couple of people at the fly-in. They were loving drone deploy for the ease of use in terms of being able to just upload it in the field up into the cloud and let it process for them. Yeah, so but there like are some very strict limitations with that. I'm sure there are, so. and maybe they weren't impacted by those limitations. And also, what, what happens if you're in an area with, with like very little oh, cell phone coverage? Yeah, of course, there are you know? mitigating factors that you have to deal with. But nonetheless, I'm just saying the people I talked to, that was one of the things they appreciated about Drone Deploy. Off with it, you go. First of all, I like applications that don't need what like internet to work. I like applications where I can preload, you know, plans to work. Uh, I'm not saying yeah. that drone deploy does or does not do that. I'm just saying in general, in all acquisition applications, the ability if you know you're going to be somewhere with limited cell coverage, you can upload that area map and understand exactly what you're going to map, and and that's very cool. Sure. Um, now he asked the question. You know, he said, "What is the best application?" So okay, there's Pix4D. Capture Reality, PhotoScan, Bentley, and Info. All of those are delegated to other applications. Like, for example, AutoCAD, they're using, I think it's Bentley. I'm, don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure. Uh, I think they're using Bentley. My point in telling you this is that multiple of these applications that are cloud-based applications um, are using one of these five engines to actually process your imagery. Pix4D and Bentley are known for their accuracy, and Pix4D is still at the top, in my opinion. Um, but if you want pretty-looking models, you're going to be using PhotoScan or Capture Reality. I prefer Capture Reality over PhotoScan, but I haven't used PhotoScan enough to really make that determination. That being said, when it comes to output deliverables, I'm cringing to say this, but it's true, and 
I don't, I want to give people objective, you know, information. I don't want to have a bias just for the bias. Like I don't want to be biased against drone deploy because our competitors do nothing but teach drone deploy. That actually helps us. So it, you know, I just want to put this information out there. Drone deploy does a fantastic job of deliverables. You can share your deliverables to your clients. You can do your volumetric reports and have an uploadable PDF to your client like that. It's actually awesome. Um, Pix40 is not that simple. But if you're not familiar, what you can do is you can process your imagery um, in Pix40, run step one and two. You can add your manual tie points and you can do everything. And you would upload your P4A file to Pix40 model or Pix40 cloud processing with the images. And then you would be able to output the deliverables online to your clients. This is something that was actually taught at the fly-in. This is something that everyone was like, what? I didn't know you could do that. Oh my gosh, that makes it so much easier. Blah, 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 blah. It's something that you guys should look into. Um, if you guys are struggling on exactly how to do it, we can talk about having Pix40 come on the show and explain how to do that. There are limitations with things like drone deploy, but I also know that they're working on these limitations, so they may not be around for a long time. One of those limitations is a highly accurate manual tie points and where you do your tie points and your ability to do manual tie points. For example, like if I want a super high accurate map of, let's say, a crime scene, you know, I'm going to be doing an orbital video on the ground. I'm going to be doing a crosshatch. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing that. I need to process some of these maps with GPS and some of these maps without GPS and then merge the maps together to get the best model possible, add in my manual tie points and add in my ground control points to have absolute accuracy and then include the scale constraints therein. You would only do that if you were doing highly accurate maps for stockpile calculations, for 2D maps, for lateral measurements via orthomosaics and whatnot. You don't need highly accurate maps, which is why drone deploy works for such a large majority of people like construction, you know, mm -hmm. groups. As soon as you get into three dimensional measurements, so like you're doing vertical measurements and whatnot, your scale constraints and your accuracy matter so much that, that personally at, in what you can do with drone deploy right now, I wouldn't really trust it. Yeah. I, I need to have more detail. I need to have more um, like, for example, and I'm not sure if you can do something like this with Drone Deploy's new mapping engine because I heard that they're not using Pix40's mapping engine anymore. They're using someone else's mapping engine, and I don't know whose it is. Okay. So, but one of the big things in the previous problems is that we couldn't do geometric matching, which means that essentially the software says, okay, I'm going to do matching points based on like geometry, like lines, walls, all that. You couldn't do that in drone deploy. So if you're ever doing accident reconstruction, you're screwed. You'll never get accuracy because you can't do that one thing. And you would, that would be your ground, uh, you know, if it's your mobile phone or whatever, your ground orbits that you're doing, you, it would be almost impossible to process that correctly and then merge that with your grid, your grid uh, mission to get the most accurate crime scene map. Which, by the way, did you see the crime scene map that Parker did? It was awesome. It was awesome unreal it was awesome i mean it looked like a photograph it was incredible mm -hmm. and now I'll, I'll say this again highly accurate maps pix 40 really beautiful maps capture reality one of our students which actually, is what he used right mm -hmm. for his map yes parker hill who's also going to be doing a class for drone you here about interior and exterior map mapping and merging them together because people have been asking about how to do that um, he won Sketchfab's best model for drone mapping, and it's it's unreal. I know even the Pix4D guys were talking about it, and then you know I introduced him to Iron God at the fly, and he's like, "You're the guy who did the model." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, very cool. He's like, everyone at work has been trying to show me this model. <laughs> That's awesome. He's good. Yeah, he is good, and we're he's excited good. to have that class coming up. I yeah. mean, we're doing a whole series on mapping. We're just getting started, so. Um, we're bringing on new instructors for mapping and it's taking the level significantly higher. Very excited about that. Yeah, and bringing on the M600 and all the things that we're going to be able to do with that and the mm -hmm. classes that you're going to be able to teach with that as it relates to all this is going to be really exciting and fun and uh, going to bring a ton of value to people who plug into the drone U community. True. It's going to be very cool. True, true, true. So ultimately, I mean, it comes down in some respect to kind of what your needs are, which is always true with software right? Software and hardware solutions. And do you need ease of use? Is your what you're trying to provide not that complex? Then maybe you go this way. If it's really, really complex, you need extra detail, et cetera, et cetera, then you go another way. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends on what your end use is. And by the way, once everyone sees what Intel comes out with, with Intel Insight, 
um, and uh, mission control, whenever it does come out, it's going to blow things like drone deploy out of the water. That's just, I'm not going to say any more, but um, well, I'm very excited to be working with Intel on that. So hmm. that's all I'm going to say. All right. And if you're Is that a me- soon? Can if you- you're a member, you can actually watch the video of us in the demo that they did. Um, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or not. I don't think so. But um, it was the Intel talk at AUVSI earlier this year. If you haven't watched that and you're in mapping, you need to go watch that. Yeah, I don't think that was on YouTube. I think that's just members in membership. You yeah. need to watch that video if you're a member. Yeah. If you want to know the future of mapping, there's 60 minutes of the future of mapping. Because <laughs> what you can do with mission control is like... <laughs> Mind-blowing. Huh. Very cool. Yeah. I'm going to go watch it. Yep. And by the way, <laughs> I asked all the hard questions... Haven't at that conference like about all the restrictions in cloud processing and they had an answer to a majority of them hmm. so they're listening and intel has the money they have the resources yeah no doubt didn't they isn't it intel that invested in 3dr like 50 million bucks or something was and that intel? unique and yeah the, um, and then they apparently decided we're just going to do it ourselves Is did that you know that, that the department of interior just bought two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of solos yeah i saw that that was what? yesterday what is that about? Well, it's well, just, the, the department. Well, it just goes to prove that everyone solos. was saying that the Department of Interior put out a memo that they can't buy DJI. This just solidifies that that's true. Yeah, it's interesting because they bought solos at like three ninety nine a pop. Wow. I mean, that shows you how so much. So were value these they solos have. that were just sitting on the shelf? I think so. <laughs> that's what everyone's been like talking <laughs> yeah. about in the forums. They're like, I wonder how many batteries work. Yeah. <laughs> Poor 3DR. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Man, we wanted them to succeed so bad. Yeah, but, and uh, now, anyways. Colin, now Colin Gwynn has his little monthly newsletter where he's like, let me tell you what's going on in the industry. I don't work in anymore. So, yeah, I mean, I guess he started sort of a consultancy thing, which good for him. Hopefully he's uh Anyone who's working in successful. the drone business, I want you to be successful. Yeah, for sure. Straight up. For sure. It's just ironic at times, some of the things that people say. I, I get a good laugh out of it. I'm sure just like people get a, a laugh out of things that I say. We're all human. <laughs> a laugh okay? and a cry, Paul. Yeah, a laugh and I'm a cry. Sure there's, I'm sure there's some tears too, okay? <laughs> so, I love anyway. when you get all, like that East Coast comes out and some tears. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, on that note. Maybe we forget should forget about this, it, Rob. Uh, exactly. Forget about yes, it. Yes, I will forget about it. <laughs> On that pond Lest show. you break my knees. Hey, yo, <laughs> I'm going to take you in the back. I'm going to grab the bat. We're going to see which kneecap comes off first. <laughs> I'm faster, so it's all right. Even this old man. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All, all right. right. Well, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Hope you had fun. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.